So news dropped in Warhammer this week that to most people in the world sounds like, oh, Okay, but in Warhammer, it's pretty much Hiroshima number two, which I guess would be technically Nagasaki. So we'll just say it's another 9-11. Seriously, people have been losing their goddamn minds. Boycotts are being called. There's mass resignations. Some people who decided to make Warhammer their entire personality have now decided to make Battletech their entire personality. YouTube videos are being made by massive YouTubers and, of course, failed players political candidates, and people who have never once played a single game of Warhammer in their entire life are now saying that it's been ruined and they'll never play again. Or, uh, for the first time. That's right, there's war in Warhammer. Shocking. And I've gotta say, I've never quite seen it like this. I've been involved in Warhammer and wargaming for about 20 years now. And there's been ups and downs, a lot of downs, but the vitriolic reaction to this change has been cataclysmic. And it has even gone so far as to hit national news. And what's happening is insanity, and the story just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and building and building and building. So what the hell are people mad about, and why, and are they in the right? Well, this drama, this scandal, started when a Warhammer faction was updated with a new army book called a Codex by Games Workshop recently. This faction is called the Adeptus Custodes, aka Bananarama, and these are the elite bodyguards of the Emperor of Mankind. It's a whole thing. And they, for some reason, like to travel around the galaxy and do battle with nasty aliens. And they are really bad at their job of bodyguarding because the Emperor has been dead for like 10,000 years now. Although Games Workshop kind of retconned that part. So this faction got updated in a codex and codexes are army books that come with rules for each army in the game of Warhammer and also some lore stories about that army too. And in one of the lore stories of the new Custodes Codex, we meet a Custodes character who is a woman. And the drama has emerged because that, that's it, that's what everyone is mad about, because this is the first time that a female Custodes has been featured prominently in the lore and story of Warhammer. And now Warhammer has engulfed the internet and everything is on fire. Now Games Workshop have confirmed that this was all intentional in a tweet saying, quote, Since the first of the 10,000 were created, there have always been female Custodians. And this is where the madness truly began, and people burned their armies, and abandoned Warhammer, and wheeled, and gnashed their teeth, and now I have to read f***ing Daily Meal articles about it. So why? And should people be upset? Well, there's a lot more to this rage than many think, and a dark undercurrent to everything that is going on. There's something really rotten in Warhammer, and our broader culture. In fact, the discourse around this has been incredibly insane. But to see that, we first need to address the arguments that are being made about the new female custodies. Starting with... This is a major retcon, and major retcons ruin fictional settings. Okay, so let's get this argument out of the way, because I agree, major retcons do undermine the integrity of fictional settings, and an inconsistent setting is less fun to engage with as a fan. Personally, I'm still getting over the changes to Draenei in World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade. Seriously, they used to look like this, then they got retcon to look like this. What the hell, Metzen? But many people are arguing that the inclusion Inclusion of female custodies is a major retcon to the lore of Warhammer 40k, and that kind of ruins things. Uh, the only problem is, uh, they're sort of wrong about it being a retcon. I mean, sure, in the past, all of the custodies have either explicitly been depicted as men or their gender has been ambiguous, because custodians are often depicted in big custard cream armor, and you can't really tell what they're packing. And likewise, every time custodies are referenced in the lore, they're referred to with male pronouns. Yes, the dreaded pronouns, and gendered as men, with them once being called a brotherhood. Although it must be said that most of the time they're actually described pretty neutrally in the lore, their gender doesn't come up. Still, this is a pretty compelling argument that female custodies are a retcon and they're something new. Firstly though, there is a potential previous mention of female custodies in the 2022 novel Echoes of Eternity, which is part of the Horus Heresy book series, sort of. In this story, there's a passage that refers to to a group of custodies as, quote, these men and women were plated in the same gold as the ship. And custodies do like to wear gold, so, you know, no smoke without fire. What about uh, smoke machines? 
Dry ice. But this line is ambiguous. It might have been referring to female custodies or simply Sisters of Silence, who are a different all-women organization that wear similar colored armor to custodies and often hang out with them. Personally, looking at all the lore, in my opinion, I think the female custodies is a bit of a retcon. But only a little bit, because Games Workshop are really, really weird. See, the author Aaron Dembski Bowden, who writes Warhammer novels for a living, wrote in a Reddit post all the way back in sunny 2019 before this crisis that he has always wanted to write about female custodies characters because there is no lore reason that custodies can't be women. And in fact, in that Reddit post, he said that he was going to depict female custodies in a novel, but he couldn't because the higher ups in Games Workshop told him that he wasn't allowed to because Games Workshop don't sell any female custodies miniatures. Ah, ha, 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 ha. remember Warhammer? is a miniature war game, something that a lot of people who are mad about this seem to have forgotten, probably because they don't play the game. But miniatures are really the action for Games Workshop. That's where the money is. They, they don't really care about much else. All this lore stuff, it's all an excuse to bash your plastic toys together. And Games Workshop try not to depict anything in the Warhammer 40k lore that doesn't have a miniature that can't be bought. And this is all because of a court case that took place back in 2012. See, I told you I've been around for a while. This was called the Chapter House case and it's a pretty complicated legal case so I'm just not going to get into the nitty gritty here but suffice to say Games Workshop lost that case and as a result, they created a policy afterwards to no longer depict anything in the lore or art or codexes of Warhammer that they do not sell as a miniature. Because otherwise, as Games Workshop saw it, other companies could swoop in, create miniatures of those characters in the lore, and then profit off the Warhammer IP, and Games Workshop wouldn't be able to stop them as established in Chapter House. And it is this policy that has prevented female custodies characters appearing in the fiction of Warhammer 40k according to Aaron because the entire miniature line of custodies are all gendered male, or at the very least ambiguous. So it was never really intentional or a central part of the identity of custodies that they're all men. And in fact, this new lore story about a female custodies in the new custodies codex suggests that we're probably going to see female custodies miniatures soon. But regardless, in my opinion, this is all still a retcon. So then the question is, has it ruined the Warhammer setting? Well, no, probably not. The retcon that ruined the Warhammer setting for me is the one that took place 20 years ago. The one that changed my Necron army from a faceless army of the undead into an army of goofy space pharaohs. <laughs> they just want to collect stuff now. And that was a massive retcon that ruined my Terminator themed army and impacted the entire faction of Necrons. How they play, how they are perceived, and how they are painted. That actually substantially changed things. But you know what? I got over it, because retcons happen a lot in Warhammer 40k. Seriously, Warhammer is riddled with them. The Space Marines used to be normal humans back in Rogue Trader, the first edition of Warhammer 40k. Now, they're transhuman super soldiers, and people would have it no other way. Hell, custodies themselves used to wear leather thongs and nothing else. That's not the case anymore, sadly. Things change in Warhammer. Some of it good, uh, some of it bad, most of it largely irrelevant, let's be honest. Because this is all, after all, just an excuse to bash our toys together. Something that people who talk about the sanctity of the lore of Warhammer tend to forget, because they're casual fans, they're not real fans. Female Custodies is just one in a long, long, long list of retcons, and it's a bit odd to get upset about retcons in Warhammer 40k, now in the godforsaken year of 2024, when it happens all the time. It screams to me that you're someone who's gotten into Warhammer, you know, recently, in the last couple of years, you're new here. Well, welcome to the club, but this has been a recurring feature of the franchise since the 80s. You're gonna have to get over it. The lore of Warhammer is not immutable. Which leads us to argument number two. <clears throat> This would be fine, but Games Workshop is now gaslighting and lying to fans. This argument, echoed in the f***ing Daily Mail of all places, is that yes, a retcon has occurred, but Games Workshop are being particularly egregious about it this time, because they are trying to claim that there have always been women in the custodies when that's clearly not the case, and this was a great opportunity to make some new lore that was interesting and good, but the opportunity was missed, because Games Workshop 
Pork Shop are liars and they have lied. Now, I've seen this argument a lot, and the problem with it is that the declaration that female custodians have always existed, this retcon, it's been delivered in the way that all retcons are delivered in Warhammer. It was just stated as a matter of fact, and then we were all expected to move on. And to prove that that's always the case, here are three words that they don't want you to know about. Rugal, Dorn, Tank. The Rugal Dorn tank was created in 2022 and it was an entirely new tank option for the Imperial Guard Army. Never seen before or mentioned ever in the decades of lore that preceded it. But then Games Workshop made a miniature of it, started selling it for the Imperial Guard, and what happened? Well, suddenly it has always existed. It has always been in the setting and story. We just happen to have never seen one, which is pretty wild considering it now essentially acts as the main battle tank for the main army of the Imperium of Man. There's billions of these tanks apparently, and they all just poofed into existence out of nowhere. And honestly, people just didn't have much of a problem with that. It was retconned, but no one really cared. But perhaps even more egregious than the Rogal Dorn tank is that the year before that, the Leagues of Votan, an entirely new faction, were also invented out of thin air and inserted into the setting. Apparently, these guys have inhabited the pretty well-documented Galactic Core for millennia, frequently traded with and fought all the other factions in the game, and we just happened to have never really heard about them before. Very, very convenient. And people didn't really have a problem with that either. Or, of course, there's the Hammerfall Bunker for Space Marines, which was retconned to have existed as long ago as the Horus Heresy, just so Games Workshop could sell a few more models. Or how about the Necrons, my old favorite pals? These were the ancient, immortal foes of the Eldar, cursed to be locked in an epic battle for eternity. And, of course, the Eldar just happened to have never mentioned this before ever in in any of the lore before this. This is how retcons work in Warhammer 40k, and anyone who isn't just a casual observer would know that. Honestly, it's how most retcons work in most properties. How come Frazier never mentioned that his dad was a cop, or that his brother existed? And it can be jarring, it can come out of nowhere, it can feel unsatisfying. But Warhammer is a commercial property. It is designed to evolve and change because ultimately it is a core corporate product manufactured to be sold and packaged for a miniature war game for profit. The lore exists primarily to sell plastic models, just the way that Frasier lore is designed to set up a fun sitcom. <laughs> That's sardonic Frasier. It is not designed to be enjoyed simply for the sake of art. And I have a lot of sympathy for those who feel aggrieved by that. I feel aggrieved by that. But the solution to that is not to jump ship to another fandom and begin making that entirely 100% of our personality, because that's just going to lead to more heartache. The solution instead is to cultivate a wide variety of interests. Touch some grass, look directly at the sun, read another book. We owe it to ourselves to be more fluid complete people. And this is why we should have more than one hobby. We can't just be about one thing. It's why I have more than one YouTube channel, and you should subscribe to that one as well. But for some reason, the recent addition of Female Custodies seems to have generated a lot more hate than any retcon ever before, the likes of which I have never seen in Warhammer. And that is very suspicious to me, because I don't think that all this hatred and outrage is organically emerging from the player base. Rather, I think that this situation is being opportunistic opportunistically seized upon by people who have an ideological problem with female custodies for political reasons, something that really has nothing to do with Warhammer at all, and everything to do with, well, everything else. And this brings us to the next major argument that I have seen. This is just virtue signaling diversity. Women can't be soldiers. Warhammer has gone woke. So this is the real argument that is being made by many, most often from political commentators who have likely never played a game of Warhammer in their life, or your racist uncle's favorite boomer magazine, The Daily Meal. This argument is appealing to them because it really has nothing to do with Warhammer, but 
you know, if you are a fan of Warhammer, then you would know this argument is wrong. And they'd also know that if they'd read more than just a Wikipedia page. Because firstly, women in Warhammer can be soldiers. It just doesn't matter what your personal politics are about this. In Warhammer 40k, this is a fact of the setting. And women frequently appear in military orders within the Imperium of Man since the very beginning. There's an entire army of elite warrior women called the Sisters of Battle. They uh, they battle. The Imperial Guard, the Mian army of the Imperium of Man, that has plenty of men and women models in that army. For other factions like the Eldar, their soldiers have always been split pretty much 50-50 between men and women. In the setting of Warhammer 40k, gender roles don't really universally exist. The, the setting isn't concerned with them that much. The only real explicit reference to women as a category is the Sisters of Battle, who are all female because of a legal technicality that prevents the church from maintaining men at arms, but nothing said they can't have women at arms. Ho <laughs> ho, got him! That part, by the way, I think that got retconned as well. Otherwise, there doesn't seem to be any reference to men or women outside of, like, the Space Marines. It mostly just concerns itself with human, Xenos, or mutant. It's not the kind of setting that worries about what's in your pants, unless it's a second face that whispers obscenities. For Custodes specifically, they are genetic super soldiers, barely even human. Muscle mass, how long someone could run or hold their breath, or how high they can jump, it's all academic to them, because they can bench press a forklift, whatever gender they are, because they're all hooked up on venom and protein and shit. On the face of it, there's nothing preventing women from being drafted or signing up for the Custodes army in the setting. And while their lore has referenced the sons of nobles in the past, retconning it so that female Custodes have always existed was probably the most elegant solution. Because to do otherwise would be to explain the selection process of the Custodes, something which has always been shrouded in mystery. And it's more interesting that way. I don't want to learn anything about how they choose new applicants. I don't want to learn how their gene therapy and manipulations work. I don't need those types of detail. All I need to know is that baby goes in, boss baby comes out. And it's never really been a primary part of the faction that they be a sausage fest, unless you're going for the really gay 80s interpretation, in which case, I don't know, I don't think the Daily Meal's arguing for that one. On the other hand, by diversifying the faction line, this will expand modeling opportunities for the miniatures and bring a breath of fresh air into what is otherwise a very Sammy looking faction. Honestly, the custodies need it from a modeling perspective, and that's kind of all I care about. In terms of diversity, this is an extremely small step in Warhammer, a small story about a single character in a relatively obscure faction that was never really about gender exclusivity. Uh, that said, it is true that Warhammer is changing and has gone woke. They even made an announcement about it. When I joined the wargame hobby 20 years ago, there were very little women at my local store. That has massively changed. Women work at Games Workshop, they play games, they're everywhere, and likely as time goes on, the Warhammer setting will reflect that more and more, as we would expect any art to reflect the society that it's made within. And frankly, while I think the Warhammer has kind of gotten worse in terms of the setting, it has nothing to do with diversity and everything to do with the setting becoming more focused on the lore than focused on the miniature war game. Ultimately, 50% of the world are women. I think it's fair that they can play with the toys too. Honestly, this is so minor a change considering the pushback and vitriolic hate that it has spawned online. It's far more hatred and anger than I saw when Games Workshop raised their prices last year for the uh, second, th third time in the year, something that actually impacted war gamers. Games Workshop do a lot of things that deserve criticism. They often take actions that I talk about on this channel that are really, really bad for consumers. They often raise prices, they refuse to credit their artists, they have begun bundling models in very expensive limited edition box sets, they don't produce enough stock and therefore their products get scalped and sold for extremely high prices on eBay, they lock rules behind paywalls, they are removing posability on their models. Hell, just last week, Games Workshop deleted entire armies from Warhammer Age of Sigmar, which which rendered people's entire collections of models obsolete and no longer playable. That's thousands and thousands of dollars for some people just 
snapped away in the new edition. As a company, Games Workshop are focused on profit, and they are run by executives from print media, IT, accountancy, financial firms. And this often manifests in practices that are anti-consumer, and overall their business model makes the war game hobby worse. But this change? This is not one of those times where Games Workshop have shit the bed. This really isn't a big deal in the hobby, and I question the wargaming credentials of any content creators that have decided to come out of the woodwork, Johnny come lately, to say this is bad, based on their own preconceived notions of what Warhammer is. That's right, Discourse is calling Osman Gold out. He's a thick fan. So we need to focus on the stuff that actually matters, making the wargame hobby more accessible, bigger, affordable, and ultimately fun with better games and better models. And if that sounds like something that you'd like to support and believe in a critical voice in the wargame hobby that's reasonable and focused on the real issues rather than these pantomimes, and also want to get a free miniature wargame about vampires which Witches and conspiracies fighting each other, and would love to watch reviews about all sorts of different war games and RPGs that exist in the hobby. I'm doing Malifaux this month, and you also want bonus live streams, then check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash discourse miniatures to help this channel fight on behalf of consumers and get access to a really cool hobby community. Also, check out this video if you want an in-depth look into that chapter house court case that I mentioned earlier and how it relates to Games Workshop's refusal to credit artists, because I actually have been covering wargaming for a while now and covering the topics that matter. And a massive thanks to my patrons, especially CryptoKev. I'll catch y'all next time. Bye bye